So, Sarah, there was something we detected. Well, the emissary gave me a detection thing on... Uh... So, yeah, let's visit the moon and uh, see what all this stuff is about, what the emissary has been chatting about. If we can make some heads or tails with it, I think that will be great. Right, let's investigate this research station. Hopefully it's not overrun with you names and what's. We really have. Oh, it opened. It's abandoned. I bet there's nothing here. Seeing any terminals? I'm not seeing anything, are you? Ah, here we go. Volta. I want to remind the research team that Volta is highly priority supercomputer that is currently being contracted. Loosely, okay. Not personal use projects. Yes, the decimal points of pi can be calculated. Yeah, yeah, for now everyone's concentrate on hitting our deadlines of developing. Yep. Project Prism. We're happy to announce that the first test launch of Project Prism will be held today. Uh, I would like to thank everyone. I would like wait, I would like everyone to suit up and join us on the roof at nine. Reminder, please sync all watches to Eastern Daylight Time. Our partner will also be on the radio launch. We'll be recording the event, so best behavior. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, it's late. Okay, confession time. Being single on a moon base is the worst. I only get like an hour to use the communication link to Earth every couple of days. And let me tell you, there's long distance dating, and then there's like long distance dating, you know? Oh, hey there, I'm a scientist. Deadly employed, willing to take you out for coffee in like six months when I'm back from space. <laughs> it's not a great opening line. <sighs> you seriously can't get a date? You're an astronaut. Hey, no one asked you. Nova Galactic Project Log, Principal Engineer Lang Shu. I admit, this is not the most disciplined team I've ever run. Malcolm keeps stealing computational time on Voltaire, thinks I don't know this. And Sabina's been distracted lately, but won't tell anyone why. I really should demand answers from both of them. But honestly, I'm too preoccupied with this contract. We all are. Despite anything going on in our personal lives, there's something special about what we're building here. Okay. Have a quick up look upstairs, I guess. Are these people still around? Well, no, I imagine they're long gone by now. Nickel, uranium, coolant. Oh, here we go. Number six. Oh. When I accepted the assignment up here, we were told to bring a couple of personal items. Some psychological studies said it helped when you're away from Earth this long. I brought my grandmother's old abacus. I would play with it on her lap, and she'd teach me the Russian for all the numbers. She, uh... just... got word that she passed. The next shuttle isn't for three months, so I'll... I won't be able to go to the funeral. <sighs> Goodbye, Babushka. Thank you for teaching me math. It brought me to the moon. Wow. You know, it's it's probably a good thing I don't make recordings like this to myself, because that just staunted me for a second. Huh. Voltaire really is something else. A supercomputer so powerful, they put it on the damn moon to keep it cool. Although by that logic, they should be running it purely in the vacuum of space. But hey, good marketing material. Uh, I've been spending some off hours running some dumb simulations, just because I can. My favorite so far is simulating the sound of every duck on Earth quacking after receiving a piece of bread. You didn't know you wanted a real-time sim of feeding all the ducks, but now you have it. 
You're welcome, humanity. Hmm. Okay, that's weird. Hmm. It definitely seems like there is some sort of... Oh. Nova Galactic Project Log, Principal Engineer Lang Shu. Voltaire is being reconfigured for this new initiative. The math we're being asked to crunch is ambitious, even for a supercomputer. We might as well be asking it to count every grain of sand in every desert on Earth. Who came up with these original equations? Our partner isn't being very open about it. Every question I have goes through some discretionary channel. I'm surprised we even know we're working on a ship. Okay. All right, let's uh, flick the switch on the advanced scanner. And there we go, it's detecting it for me. You ever get jealous? You know, the crew in the shipyard? Building the actual vessels that are going to travel the stars? We're literally on a base on the moon. Oh, come on, Sabina. I'm trying to share my dreams here. Well, your dreams are always out there and never here where the rest of us live. Can't you just be happy doing your job? Where's the fun in that? Engines in a time almost complete. Total time, 5 minutes, 22 seconds. Right on schedule. How are the Helium-3 valves holding, Nova? We double-checked the leakage concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. Any changes to the calculation sequence from Voltaire? No changes since we uploaded the last figures yesterday. It's a clean shot from here to Jupiter. One day the computer will be on board the spaceship. Just imagine that. One miracle of science at a time, Canaveral. Counting down. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Canaveral. Are you breathing? All clear, Nova. Indicators look good. The ship should be cruising Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in... <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all pretty excited down here at NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years. Huh. That's fairly intriguing. Did I get all of these? The one, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. Nice. Huh. This is like retreading history. It's pretty cool. Look at old Earth. I hate that it's uh, so not what it used to be. Sounds like some ships coming down from orbit. Keep an eye on that laddie. I have an important personal decision to make, but I need to discuss something with you first. If it will help that you decide, then I'll listen. Phew, thank you. So, where to start? Um, before I was with the Navigator Corps, I was career military, part of the United Colonies Navy. When the colony war broke out, I was posted as the chief navigator on a warship, the Dauntless. Making, uh, you no know, chief navigator sounds quite an accomplishment. Well, the position didn't last long. There was a particularly bloody battle. We were fighting over a world in the Ata Cassiopeia system. Worst fighting I'd ever seen. 
We lost 12 ships that day. 12. Including my own. If this is too difficult for you, uh, we won't. We don't have to continue. No. This is important. I need to tell you this. The ship was barely intact. The captain and first mate died the previous day, which put me in command. A shrewd captain would have called for the crew to abandon ship, but I was so angry. I wanted to stay. I needed to fight. I would have done the same, like, you do get angry, like, when I lost my friends, I sort of a similar story, but I only served, <laughs> I didn't serve that long, and I didn't fulfill my service to the UC to get citizenship, so, I had to do it in other ways, and I've now done it in different ways, but yeah, I would have done the same. I believe you, but you haven't heard the worst of this. We fought for hours, but the damage was fatal. I gave the order to abandon ship, and the crew piled into the escape shuttle. As the shuttle launched, I could see it was damaged. I... I heard screams before the radio cut. The last thing I saw, they were... spiraling helplessly towards the planet's surface. There was... There was nothing I could do. I'm sorry I had to go through that. You're sorry. For me? If I hadn't been so stubborn, so eager to prove that I could handle command, my crew would have had more time to escape. Your crew knew what they were getting into when they signed up. Yes. They expected to serve on the best ships with the best captains. The crew of the Dauntless had to settle for me. When the dust settled, the United Colonies gave me a medal. Can you believe that? A damn medal! I never even had a chance to find the shuttle wreckage and give my crew a proper burial. Can't blame yourself when it amounts to bad luck. At least you're alive to still honor their memory. Add their legacy. That's true. But still, it doesn't erase the real issue here. Remember when you said no one but me would have pushed harder to keep the Navigator Corps going? Well, this time, pushing too hard cost lives. Don't you get it? Everything I do, everything I touch, somehow falls apart. That's why I'm worried about... us. You can't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> All this nonsense and you still have faith, eh? You really care about me, don't you? I'll never stop having faith in you, Sarah. I'm counting on that. Look, I think I've said all I can handle for now. Thank you for being there, for listening to me when I needed it the most. I'll never forget this. I promise. Hey, no worries. Unless I'm mistaken, that's one of the launch towers used during the evacuation of the Earth. I can't even imagine the chaos. How didn't it take off? Why didn't it take off? There we go. System seems to be completely offline. We should search for a way to restore the power and get it back into operation. Uh, hopefully, I'm. Uh... Hmm. Ah, here we go. that do it? Did. Watch your step. Totally abandoned. This looks like it was some type of crew preparation area. Probably the last step before boarding. Hmm, 
Hackett's definitely seen better days. Definitely has. Ah, oh, someone ripped the terminal off. The place looks amazing. <laughs> nice. Remember the final fight. Uh, the final vitals of suit seal checks are essential. Yeah. Error archives damage running system recovery partial. Deliver to Mars. Doctor Judith Tatian. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Doctor Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they've brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatian. I've been trying to cozy up to Dr. Isa, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew... Very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I... I think I'm being invited into the lab. Oh, this is getting... What did they find? Station log. Dr. Judith Satin. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I, I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window. What does that mean? They, I'm guessing they found the artifact, like an artifact or a starborn person. Like the facility broken? Maybe by uh, play tectonics, I'm guessing. Oh, earthquakes and stuff. I don't like that. Yeah, tell me about it. Whoa! It's like a museum! Oh my goodness. Some of the artifacts here are from the earliest years of NASA. Oh, what a shame all of this was left behind to deteriorate. Tell me about it. Look at this. Tickets. My word. Satellites, engines. Look at all this. Spacesuits, early designed spacesuits. Look at that. Huh. Ah, that's pretty cool. Adapted from the design originally intended for a high altitude aircraft, the Mercury spacesuit would undergo several modifications to deal with the pressure, oxygen, and thermal con uh, consideration. Even though the cabin of Mercury spacecraft itself protected against the rigorous of space travel, redundancies have been always been keen. In the event that the cabin were to pressurize and expose astronauts to the vacuum of space, the Mercury spacesuits would be able to. Uh, Offer a critical extra layer of defense. I love that. I almost wish we could... Mm, bulletproof, of course. Oh, my words. Can we take this? From 1971 to 1972, the Lunar Rover was used for the last Apollo missions. This is the original one. 
chevron. Tread patterns. Yep. Titanium help maintain traction on the moon's surface. This is fantastic. I love it. We need to get one of these working. Sarah, plot a sort of marker if you can. Maybe we can return and grab this. Oh, it's been damaged. 1958 to uh, 1963, humanity's first... Oh yeah, these were the first engines, weren't they? Six flies, a total were launched at the earliest 15... Uh, oh, a, yeah. <gasps> Mercury, oh my word. It's not. It's part of history. Yeah? If you have any gear you want me to haul, I'm happy to help. Yeah, I need you to carry this space suit a little bit. You know, I suppose you can take uh, this stuff too, actually. Maybe another time. Maybe another time. Ah, oh, this is a capsule. Yeah. Project Apollo was the first successful program to put humanity on the moon. The first moon landing project that occurred on July 20th, 1969 was actually Apollo's 11th flight, with all previous launches testing all the modules, orbits, and the critical data needed to ensure astronauts could reach the moon and return safely. Sweet. From 1965 to 1966, Project Gemini was the learning mission, whilst NASA's ultimate goal was to put a human being on the moon. Many questions had to be answered before the project's Apollo could even begin Gemini. No, Gemini was tasked with answering the, how a person could survive in space over many days, how to connect spacesuits together, wait, how to connect spacesuit, uh, spacecraft together, and how to improve spacesuit technology to operate outside of spacecraft. Oh, this is a rocket. In 2151, scientists first uh, predicted the destruction of our beloved Earth. Uh, oh. Uh, atmospheric phenomena would cause Earth air to sputter out into oh, outside of Earth's gravity, dooming all life that remained. An estimated 50 years until the end has given NASA and other space agencies around the world the opportunity to migrate humanity far away. Uh, migrate humanity away from certain death and into the stars, thanks in part to the development of the grab drive. Ah, so this is one of those, these ones. Yeah. I'm guessing this is like a small scale model. And this was the tester what of working the grab drive, I'm guessing. Wow, that's really interesting. Got the lunar lander. I mean the lunar module, we've got the engines, we've got all that stuff. Oh! This is the lunar lander thing, isn't it? Eagle? From the Apollo mis uh, 11 mission, the lunar module Eagle was the first crew spacecraft to touch down on Earth's moon. Eagle's counterpart was uh, commanded module Columba Columbia, which the lunar module needed to both separate from the from and eventually reattach to. Columbia would take astronauts to and from the orbit of the moon, while the Eagle would bring them down would bring them to and from the surface. Okay, cool. Hmm. 
Has that got information on it? The satellite, it's kind of, kind of crashed down. Has it broken a... Oh. Yeah, rovers. Cool. Mer program. The Mars Expedition Rover program launched in uh, 2003 and allowed uh, well, the remote exploration and study of Mars. Two twin rovers were made, nicknamed Spirit and Opportunity, whilst... Spirit ceased communication function in 2010. The Opportunity rover continued operations well into the 2018, exceeding its final planned time by over 14 years. Cool. NASA partnered with Nova Galactica. Galactic, sorry, not Galactica. The creators of the Voltaire supercomputer on an ambitious aerospace project to pull gravity itself. The result was the first spacecraft capable of faster than light travel, the first successful voyage as uh, saw astronauts reaching Jupiter in moments that would have taken. That's crazy. What's this? Living outside of Earth. Whilst long-term missions in space began in the late 1990s, with a program such as the International Space Station, humanity began living on other planets almost 100 years later. Small outposts of five or fewer scientific research teams eventually gave the way, you know, gave way to the entire colony effort on Mars and other orbiting bodies in our solar system. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, we've been up there. We've been up here, right? I don't want to miss a thing, Sarah. This is... Extraordinary. A true look at our history through the eyes of NASA. Like, there's a lot of data and stuff, but nothing like this to, like, a first-hand experience of looking. Look at this. Look at all this crap. It's cool to see that our functions never changed. Like the med packs never changed their design. <laughs> I'd hope not, really, is it? Yeah, Project Preston. Yeah. Amazing. I just don't understand where these calculations came from. There's something wrong with the math? I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects. No motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you've had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to bump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust. against the brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith, I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise. Ah, all the project stuff. Okay, cool. Hmm. It's definitely the an artifact that we're going to discover here, so we've got to keep looking around. They were clearly testing space habitat viability in this area. It seems as if they knew the inevitable was on the horizon. They did. I think they did. Jeez. This is falling apart. That way's both. I suppose we need to go through this way anyway. Not much left of this geology laboratory. Ironically, the surrounding rock appears to have sealed the fate of this part of the facility. 
Yeah. Bit of beryllium. Ah. Any computers around? Maybe up here, Sarah? What's this? Tales of Space and Time? I'm pretty sure I've already read that about 50 times. Not many books left from Earth. Power required to the switch. Ah, here we go. Superior Explorer spacesuit. Valuable. You're in some air. Can we get in there? Alright, keep an eye on that, Sarah. We can get through get through some of these areas. With the the uh, with the mining pick. Yeah, I have something for you. I need you to just carry some resources for me, okay? Bye for now. Bye for now. Ian's gonna be running into some robots. You know what? Let's start it. Let's grab some of these. Definitely feels like there's something valuable here. Hostiles, I am hmm. Right. Ouch. One more. Oh, right there. Too heavy to pick up. The hell are we doing to this thing? Well, look at that. It appears we've found one of Vasco's long-lost relatives. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to find out. Hmm. I bet he would. And that we've utterly destroyed his other counterpart too. That's another thing. Gotta keep an eye out for, like, places we can... Trim down, maybe? Where does this lead? Oh, for God's sake. Drop some of that rubbish already. It's not rubbish, Shara. It's useful things. Circuit boards. Or oh, that nano tubing. A circuit board. Leak house. 
Uh, we're picking up everything again. This computer active. No. This is quite an impressive facility. The logistics it must have taken to build it this deep underground. <laughs> it's astonishing. I know. Must have taken ages. Oh, they're a bit silly putting a locker there. Without a... Security procedures. Check all badges. Yeah. Project log. Dr. Victor Isa. We turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore. But further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us. It's all going to be possible. Hmm. Project log. Dr. Judith Petian. I watched the Gravjet tests from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming and worrying. It could take years, decades, before we know what all these side effects of operating a grab drive can be, but no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. Hmm. She's, I reckon, gets a sense of foreboding, maybe. It is a, you know, it is a massive discovery, and to not measure it properly, I suppose, could lead to issues. Maybe. Really, was that door necessary? I suppose for wide loads, maybe. If there's a way to access the deeper sections of this storage area, I'm certain we'll find it. Oh. Huh. It's safe here, Sarah. That's why it was locked. Unfortunately, I can't carry that. Actually, I can. <laughs> oh. What's going on here? Something's still working down here. Yeah, that's the door to get in. Is there anything else we can explore? Just trying to keep an eye up for, like, anything, Sarah. This is crazy. Everything's floating. Who are you? Victor, damn it. The hell? Leave that behind. The hell happened here? Please be careful when running power through prototype. Secure all loose objects, ensure empty pockets, remove jewelry watches, etc. I never 
Reaper actually got to visit your labs back when we were working on the Grav Drive projects. Seems like ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we're seeing. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I just want to be sure. It's, it's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? Interesting. As requested, uh, Masri's team is on full analysis of the data provided to us. I'm sure uh, this magnetosphere shows clear signs of fluctuation often in correlation with the periods of frequently large gravitational waves emitting from the moon. These gravitational waves seem to be affecting it. The magnetic shield provided by Earth's inner core, affecting its core itself, is given a source. Data indicates the change of rate increasing exponentially. Our magnetosphere falters its ability to protect Earth's sun. Yeah. Hmm. This happens before Mars, a planet studied. Yeah. Hmm. I know what I'm seeing, Victor. The data coming back from the satellites is very clear. It's the graph drives. All those jumps from the moon. At this rate, Earth's atmosphere is going to start sputtering out into space. Can the drives be fixed? I'm working on some designs that should discreetly solve the problem. Under the guise of an emergency update to the fueling pumps. We're talking about the end of Earth, and you're trying to be subtle about it. Judas, the last thing we need is people losing faith in grab drive technology. That might be our only option. To what? Are you seriously saying we should abandon Earth? The timeline is under 50 years. A blink of an eye for a planet, but more than enough time for a human exodus. And what do we tell people? We say it's an act of God, one that science has found a solution for. Time for humanity to take its place in the stars. You know, didn't you? You lied to me. I... All this time, I dedicated my life to this discovery, Victor. And you knew we were going to kill off our planet? You haven't seen the future I've seen. There's an infinite expanse of promise out there. A meteor could have hit Earth. A plague, another world war. Colonizing other galaxies secures humanity's future for all coming generations, across all time. At the expense of our home. Stop it, both of you. All that matters is building enough ships to get everyone off this planet. And we need to start now. I'll draft up a statement. We'll need to address the entire international community. I'm sorry, Judith. There isn't a planet in this universe that will be far enough away from you, Victor. We are never speaking again after this is over. And he never got off world anyway. My name is Dr. Victor Isa. And if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars. But I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. Even she didn't believe me at first. But I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I... I hope you'll accept this confession, whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time i met myself he told me everything that has since come true the grav drive equations the tests on the moon earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done 
But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive, this artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did. Wow, we destroyed Earth with gravity. Wow. Oh my god. The grav drives destroyed Earth. And at the core of the first drive, an artifact. Yeah. I really don't know if that was worth it. Losing Earth like how we did is a bit of a... Not a good thing, is it? I mean, I suppose we've, you know... Visited distant stars and all that. But we kind of lost our home. Kind of understand uh, Judith. Artifacts say. Constellation, we've arrived on the surface of Earth. We need to discuss what you found. And it looks like other Starborn got here before us. So, you might have company. Crap. They can uh, really dish out some damage. Right, I just want to quickly scan, have a look around this area first before I move out. Yeah, we don't want to do that. He's got reactive shield on. He duplicated me. How did he do that? He duplicated me. Very intriguing. Come on. Good job I keep this cutter around, isn't it? Amazing to do all this as Starborn. I mean, not amazing, but you know what I mean. It's worth losing yourself to this. This is going to end badly for you. You tell him. Can't see him though.
Hello. That we're good. You picked the wrong day to piss me off. He's got a decent weapon there. Where'd he go? He jumped out the sodden window. Can't see him. Ah, I can now. Ha ha ha. Definitely good, that's uh, skillers, to detect people going invisible. Well, on starboard anyway. Come on. Let's talk to the emissary. Oh, there they are. We lost our home. Assuming we weren't going to lose it anyway. War, disease, famine, all the classics. Don't you see? The power of the artifact forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? What gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That's why we watch over them. The only thing you are watching out for is yourself. You're both wrong. It's time for someone other than a Starborn to make a decision. Don't be a fool. The Emissary and I may have our differences, but you do not want to give us a common enemy. For once, he is right. Don't do this. We can collect the final pieces together. I don't trust any of you, what you've... To become Starborn sounds like it's a messy way and to keep be going to the Unity becomes very... I'm tired of both of you, I'll get to the Unity on my own. Well, look at that. The Emissary just became my new best friend. You've made your choice. When you are ready, the Hunter and I will be at the Buried Temple. That is where we will settle things. Meaning, we'll kill you. But hey, at least we'll wait. The final round doesn't start until there's only one artifact left to gather. And if I'm not mistaken, Constellation has one or two to go. 